Welcome to the online worship service of First United Methodist Church in Lincolnton, North Carolina. I'm Tim Roberts, I'm the pastor here, and I want to thank you for taking just a few moments to share in this time of worship as we gather together and praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you ever find yourself in Lincolnton on a Sunday morning, please come by. Uh, we have Sunday school at 10, and our worship service in person is at 11 o'clock. We welcome you at any time. But as we go into this time of worship, let's start with a time of prayer. So pray with me. Oh, gracious God, as we gather from different parts of your world at different times of this week, we thank you for being with us, that you transcend the time and the distance, and you unite us as one. Now, Lord, as we give this moment to you, let us offer ourselves, our thoughts, our praise, and let us know that wherever we are, you are with us. And we are with you. Your children have come to worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But today we're ending a series we began last month called The Beatitudes, God's Kingdom Here and Now. And in this series, we've been looking at that section of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, The Beatitudes, where you've probably heard these before. Blessed are, or happy are, about a series of about eight statements that a lot of times we think of them as if-then statements. If, if we do this, then this will be the result. Now, sometimes it is. It is. Sometimes they are ideals for us to strive for, to help us in our journey towards perfection. But sometimes they describe the people who are experiencing these things here and now. Well, today we finish it up with, I believe, the climax of the whole Beatitudes. So let's go back and hear them all, including today's. And this can be found in your Bible in the New Testament section, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses uh, 1 through 12. And hear now these words. Seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up on the mountain. When he, ca when he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reproach you, persecute, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 
Let's go to God in prayer and pray this prayer with me. Lord, I offer myself to you. Open my ears to hear and my heart to receive all you have for me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, as we look at the Beatitudes, we start to see that all of these sayings kind of run contrary to our normal view of life. I mean, most of these, these uh, sayings are not things that we really want to strive for, and, and that's okay. Because as I said just a moment ago, some of these are, ex- are explaining how God's kingdom is much wider than we think. And there are people that we call unfortunate because of their circumstance who are really blessed. Today, we end up with this last one, which takes up about three uh, verses. And it's probably the hardest one to grasp because it says, happy to be persecuted. All right, confession time here. I've never been persecuted. Uh, Have you? I mean, truly, have you been persecuted? As I look back over the years of my life, I know that there are some people who don't like me. I can remember when people made fun of me. Some people called me names. And others just outright shunned me. But I was never persecuted. You know, it seems like it may actually be a little hard to be persecuted in this day and in this part of the world. Because, you see, there are still plenty of our brothers and sisters throughout the world who are being persecuted. But really what I found here in the United States, what some people call being persecuted is really probably better defined as they're being ridiculed or, or at worst, they're being discriminated against. So I want us to think about that for just a moment. Jesus is saying happy or blessed are those who are being persecuted, whose very lives are at risk, who cannot remove themselves from this situation, uh, whose bodies are being tortured and their minds and their spirits are being uh, tortured as well, actively. And what he's saying is these are the happy people. These are the blessed people. You know, when you go back into the Greek and you take a look at that word uh, blessed, it means more than just the happy feelings that we sometimes associate with it. The way, the way it really is described, or best could be described in English, is that it is such a state of joy that you're, you're leaping with joy. I mean, it's almost like a, a fun dance. Now, that doesn't make sense, does it? That, that's what Jesus is saying the people who are being persecuted are feeling. So how, how is this possible? Well, it comes down to we have to understand the, the key phrases in this. Happy are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Or in other words, because they are good. And happy are those who are pure, pure persecuted for, for Jesus' sake, on Jesus' account. You see, the joy, the happiness, the sheer blessedness of this doesn't come from being persecuted itself as much as it is why you go through this. You see, if you just say uh, people are attacking you, then it becomes kind of self-righteous. It's like this. I I know a pastor who told me that it wasn't too long ago that some uh, some lady came into his office and just said, 
Pastor, I wanted to let you know that I am being uh, uh, persecuted at my work. No one in my office likes me because I'm such an outspoken Christian. And I applaud this pastor for being as brave in his response because he said this. He said, no, actually I'm pretty sure they don't like you because you're just a mean and nasty person. You, you see, if you feel attacked and if you're mad about it, you're not living up to what Jesus is saying here. So let's look at these two parts of persecution that Jesus is describing here. The first one is, he says, happy are those, blessed are those who are being persecuted for righteousness sake or because they are good. And this isn't just nice, but that they're really good. They've really developed a heart like Jesus. They love without condition. And the thing about it is that they're persecuted because they are good. Because, you see, evil does not like goodness. Darkness does not like light. Because both of these, light and goodness, exposes evil and darkness for what it is. And so the evil and the good will do anything and everything they can. The evil and the darkness will do anything and everything they can to discredit the good and the light. Evil, darkness does not want good to succeed. I had a friend who described it to me this way. He said, it, it, it's, it's the crab mentality. Now, I said that right, crab mentality, C-R-A-B. He said, if you want to see what this is like, put, get some crabs, live crabs, put them in a bucket. And, 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 and if you got several, I mean, many crabs in that bucket, they will each try to get out of the bucket. But as soon as one reaches the rim and starts to pull itself up, the others will latch onto it and pull it back down. If they can't, if each one cannot get out, they won't make sure no, none of the others get out either. And so they persecute. The second thing is that Jesus says, be happy because you're blessed when other people uh, reproach you or utter vile things against you. But it's on Jesus' account. Now, if you're truly a, a good person, if you're truly a, a good Christian who, who's trying their, his or her best to, to be like Jesus, then, yeah, you may be persecuted or reproached or have people slander you. This is probably likely to happen because, you see, a lot of corporations will not want to promote somebody who, are, who is honest, who may not turn the other way when they see wrong happening. I found that a lot of good folks, not all, but a lot of times good people are not elected to offices. Now, I'm not saying that if you hold an office, an elected office, that you're bad. I'm just saying that a lot of times evil wants to elect evil. If you're in school, my prayers are with you. It is tough these days to be somebody in school because even a lot of the uh, teachers and, and professors will, will use an opportunity to, to try to discredit you for your faith. And here's a sad thing. 
even people who claim to be Christians will try to, um, in a way, reproach or slander the good Christians. The, what some people will call the CEM church folks, that are the people who come on Christmas, Easter, and Mother's Day, will make fun of those who go to church every Sunday. And they may, you'll probably be shunned if you're a devout Christian by other church people because your life is dominated by your love for God. And the marginalized Christians, they want to keep their faith in a tightly defined box that they have control over. Yeah, I said that this one's going to be hard, and it is. So what are we to do? Well, the first thing is probably that we can do is avoid, avoid the whole thing. And th this is a natural tendency, especially if you like, if you tend to avoid uh, confrontation. It, you know, I, 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 um, I heard a, a story about a, a young man who was home from college for the summer and uh, he was a, a devout Christian and he needed to get a job. And so he went out to a job that his mother really fretted over because she, she worried that they may find out that he is so devout and they would make fun of him. So when he came home, she said, well, son, how did it go? How did your interview go? Uh, did anybody make fun of you? He said, no, everybody was great. And she said, well, what about your faith? What did they have to say about that? He said, they didn't say anything. They never found out. Yeah, well, he was going to be happy not to be picked on. But he didn't know, would never know the joy that Jesus is describing here. Now, the second thing that I really think that Jesus would be pushing us towards is this. To accept the persecution, but with a change of heart. I believe it's because Jesus, the way that Jesus ends this thing up about your reward is in heaven. You know, all the other Beatitudes are about here and now, but this one Beatitude promises a reward in heaven, something later on. But it takes that change of heart to know that our joy and our contentment, our happiness may not come at this moment, although as you start developing this love for God and developing God's heart, you can be happy even while being persecuted. And history records many instances of this, but here, here's a couple. Edmund Campion was a Catholic Jesuit priest uh, who lived in England back during the time right after the, uh, the, the Anglican Church had split off from R Roman Catholicism. And so Ang Anglicanism, or the Church of England, was the uh, the the religion of England at the time. But Campion was a Catholic priest, and he wasn't going to give up his, his faith. And so he continued to work underground to the other Catholics who were in the area. Well, he was caught, and he was sentenced to death. And as soon as the sentence was pronounced, he started singing, We praise thee, O God. And one witness uh, who, who saw him on his way to the place of execution, where he would be hanged, drawn, and quartered, he witnessed Campion. And he said that he was going to this place of execution almost like he was going to a wedding. Now, more recently, 
a German Lutheran pastor back in the early 20th century card, uh, named Martin Niemöller. Uh, he went through World War I as a, as a, uh, a German naval uh, uh, member. He was truly German. He believed in the German cause. And even to the point that when Hitler came to rise, to rise in power, he bought into Hitler's uh, um, sense of nationalism. He loved Germany. He even had the opportunity, as he later became a, a um, Lutheran pastor, he had an opportunity to meet personally with Hitler, and Hitler promised him that, that, uh, that nothing would change within the church. And he believed him. But you and I both know that that's not the way he was, or that Hitler was. And so Niemöller notice the change. His parents noticed what was going on and encouraged him to, uh, to speak out against Germany, against the, uh, Nazism. And so he began this missionary work to the German people to, to let them know that what they were doing was not in line with the gospel. Niemöller was called and he was sent to a concentration camp. Now, when his parents found out about this, and, and they had friends in the United States, the parents wrote to this and said, you know, it is terrible to have a son there. But it would have been even more terrible for God to have needed someone to go and preach the gospel. And Martin, had been unwilling. So let's end up with this. You may or may not ever truly be persecuted for your faith. But if you are, remember that to be blessed, it is you're persecuted for righteousness because you are really good. You have a heart for God. And you're persecuted for Christ's sake. And if that happens, there's going to be a couple of different things that could happen. One is that people will see what's going on. They will see your sheer joy and what everybody else would be saying is shame and reproach and, and, and certain death. And yet, you celebrate. They will admire that. And they will seek that same joy for themselves. That's why we look to Jesus. That's why we look to the church fathers. Because their faith was made visible. A saying that you probably have heard before is this, that, that um, your life, my life, may be the only Bible some people ever read. How does your life reflect the good news? And as I said earlier, a second thing is that evil will probably resent what you're doing. And they'll do evil. Darkness will do everything it can to squelch your faith and discredit it. Now, I say this almost with a bit of hesitation because whereas the persecuted are blessed, Remember that it's not for our glory. But if you go through this, you're, you're being initiated into the company of heaven's most noble people, noble saints. Martin Niemöller 
he wasn't a perfect person. And he, it, he went through this journey of uh, on to perfection. But he remained a loyal German. He just wanted to transform Germany. But he still uh, bought into much, many of the ideals that the Germans had for World War II. But he crossed the wrong people. After he was liberated from concentration camp, in 1946, he struggled with his initial silence, especially how he, he was trying to save Christians, but was turning a blind eye to the Jews. And he wrote this, and you probably have heard it before, but hear it again. He said, First, they came for the communist, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came from me, and there was no one left to speak for me. My friends, the only way, the only thing that allows evil to prosper in this world is for good people to do nothing. Now, if we do something, we may suffer greatly for it. But we're not alone. So hear these final words. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reproach you, persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For that is how it is when they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, to be persecuted is not something that we would look forward to. But if it ever comes, give us the strength. Give us the, the peace of soul that you are with us and that your will is being accomplished, that good will triumph evil. It may cost us, but Lord, it's for your sake. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord, our Savior, the one who was persecuted, and the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
receive now this, your benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Be great.